Hello, super fans. Welcome to Alberta News and Views. Today, Pierre Polyev is in Halifax, continuing on with his Axe the Tax rally. The, the title says, it's April Fool's Day soon. And with Justin Trudeau, the joke is on you. And of course, Justin Trudeau plans on raising the carbon tax on April 1st. The majority of the premiers in Canada are all opposed to it. Justin Trudeau does not care. He does what he wants when he wants. There is a a, a a part in this rally I want to show you, and it is very important that you pay close attention. Pierre Polyev, there is a blue tsunami going across Canada right now in support with Pierre Polyev, skyrocketing in the polls. The system that is in Canada right now is a structure that has been there for a very long time, and it is a Goliath. It will take a very special politician with support of other politicians and its constituents to move this Goliath and actually create real change in Canada. Having said that, listen to this and I will show you exactly what I mean. The NDP have ignored now for so long. They're the people over whom the government in Ottawa thinks it can rule and for which it thinks it can decide. We believe the opposite. We believe that the common people should be the masters of their own lives and their own destinies. So we will, we will repeal the censorship law, C-11, so you decide what you see and say online. There will be, there will be no central bank digital currency. No mandatory digital ID. No members of my government with any involvement in the World Economic Forum. Did you catch that? He said no mandatory digital ID. But it will be there. Check this out. So this is from the Toronto Sun. Okay. Now this was reported in January 8th, 2024. Bank of Canada files for digital dollar and other related trademarks. News comes after bank report in August said government digital currency was unnecessary. So the, the, the Bank of Canada come out with a report and said that digital currency is unnecessary. Don't worry about it. But then in December, they patented a digital Canadian dollar in both official languages. It may not look like it's going to happen anytime soon, but the Bank of Canada has quietly taken steps to control such a concept, according to Blacklock's reporter. In December 13th and December 19th filings, the bank asserted ownership of digital dollar, digital Canadian dollar, and central bank digital currency in both official languages under the Trademarks Act. Central bank digital currency, digital banking, and digital ID are all three pillars that have to be implemented um, at pretty much at the same time so they all work together. So what is coming up and what is in the works right now, this is from Armstrong Economics, is what's called open banking. So Canada to incorporate social scores in banking all in the name of open banking. I'm not going to get into this in depth right now. Um, I'm going to continue on with the Pierre Polyev rally. I'm just showing you that this is a system that is being implemented regardless of the politicians in front of our in front of our eyes. The Canadian banking system is set to be radicalized by open banking framework. Proponents are framing this as a way for banks to easily share information and access user data. The truth of the matter is that this is an opportunity to merge social standings with banking to provide government complete control over our finances. In a perfect world, open banking is awesome, but in 2024, in the world that we live in right now, it is extremely um, disturbing and worrisome. There is a lot at risk here because of cybersecurity, because of uh, foreign interference, and we have a huge problem with that in Canada. If you don't know what open banking is, like to put it pretty broadly... It's taking absolutely everything about you. All, all of your banks, all of the banks, your, your investments, everything that you have and giving each other access to it. Giving all of the financial institutions access to each other, I should say. And 
third parties. So you think of e-commerce, you're buying stuff on Amazon and all of this stuff. But what it does that they don't put front and center and tell you is it's taking everything about you and putting it in one spot, which is why that article I just read, you said that it's probably going to lead to a social credit system of some sort. Now, if that freaks you out, the system is actually already here. I'm sure you know what credit is. You have good credit, bad credit. You have to build credit. You start out. That is a, a baseline social credit score system. Having said that, we need good politicians and we need 100% complete reform. I remain optimistic with Pierre Polyev, and you can see why uh, with the rest of this rally. He means well, but a politician is only as good as the constituents that back them. He is a servant, supposedly. So if you're not vocal enough, then no changes will ever happen. And right now, the way things are in Canada, people aren't loud enough. They're not loud enough. Everybody says, how is Justin Trudeau still there? Because Canadians allow it. It's that simple. All you got to do is stop. Just stop what you're doing. Justin Trudeau will be gone by Friday. He'll be forced out by business, by society, by banks. He will be forced out if Canadians just stopped. Here's Pierre Polyev. This is a great rally. We will bring home our money from wasteful foreign aid, from botched procurement and back office bureaucracy, and we will put it right back into the major, the, the principal guarantor of our freedom, that is the men and women who lead our armed forces. Rebuild the military. Let's rebuild the forces. They stand on guard for us. His communication is so good in his rallies. Bring it home. Bring it home. Bring it home. You know, a lot of people have wondered what bring it home means, but it has a very specific set of meanings. It means bringing home more of what you earn. It means bringing home our industries to Canada. But more than that, it means bringing home the country that we knew and still loved. And to those who've forgotten, because our Prime Minister would like us to forget, how good things were, and how much better they can be. Let me paint the picture for you. It's a picture of school children skipping safely off to school in the morning with their, their parents no longer worried about their safety as they head there. It's the picture of a family sitting around the dinner table with their doors unlocked because they're no longer afraid to live in their neighborhood. It's the picture of seniors leaving the grocery store with groceries in the car and change in their pockets, waving at a shopkeeper who cleans the front of his, his shop, knowing that he will be rewarded for the risks he's taken and the work that he does. It's the, it's the picture of legionnaires sweeping away debris and planting fresh flowers for the honorable soldiers who gave their lives for that community and their entire country. It is the picture. And it is the sound, it is the sound of mothers yelling out to their kids, it's bedtime and those kids yelling right back, 10 more minutes as they try to play some more street hockey and then all of a sudden quiet. And there on a front porch sit a young couple with a Canadian flag hanging peacefully from their brand new home. with a cold drink in one hand and a beautiful paycheck in the other. Their eyes meet and they look at each other in a way that can only mean we did it. All the hard work paid off. The Canadian 
promise is restored because finally we are home. We are home. These are our people. That is our country. This is our home. Your home. My home. Our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you very much. God bless Halifax. Justin Trudeau could never, ever, ever deliver a message like that right now because he has made, he's done every, the complete opposite of everything Pierre Polyev is promising to bring back. Sadly, though, like I said, I remain optimistic, but I'm going to be honest with you. Sadly, that Canada that he is describing is gone. This is brand spanking new. More than three quarters of Canadian workers want to leave their jobs. Now, to make it short, they want to leave their jobs. It says employers are struggling to retain and motivate and demoralize and disengaged workforce fed up with wages that lag behind inflation. Let me say that again. It says employers are struggling to retain and motivate a demoralized and disengaged workforce fed up with wages that lag behind inflation. No matter how good of a politician Pierre Polyev is, there is a structure and a system in Canada right now that needs complete reform. Not just policy change, it needs a sledgehammer. It needs to get smashed, big time. All of the systems, we need justice, absolute justice. The productivity in Canada is an absolute free fall. We're hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging workforce, we're like skilled trades workers, we're hemorrhaging investment. There is so much at stake with this election coming up. It's truly unbelievable. The, the, the Canada that Pierre Polyev was painting was a Canada that was built by honest Canadians. That is what it's going to take um, to, be, to build a Canada like that, if Canadians even want it like that. If there, there is so much change in so many different uh, cultures, religions now in Canada you're going to need a remarkable politician to pull all of that together. I'm going to leave that with you. Follow me on Substack and Spotify. All of you out there, like, share, and take care.